What's going on everyone? Ains here and welcome back to Season Gaming. Now as I always like to say, I have another one of my favorite things in the world here, a brand new statue. So what you're looking at here is the Diablo 4 Lilith statue from Blizzard Entertainment and Blizzard Collectibles. This went up for pre-order last year. It is a 1 to 4 scale uh, statue of Lilith. They say it measures at 24 and a half inches. Um, and as you can see in the packaging, uh, I really like what I'm seeing already. Though, for compared to some other 1 to 4 statues, the box does seem pretty small. And I think that's going to be primarily because unlike some exclusives that come with extra heads, arms, you know, attachments, this is pretty much just a set straight piece. And so, let me give you a good look at the box here. Um, as you can see, Lilith, Daughter of Hatred. And I highly recommend if you are a fan of Diablo, um, if you haven't watched the Diablo 4 cinematic trailer that released uh, either earlier this year or late last, please do so because it's incredible. <clears throat> now on the back here, you can see uh, it's embossed as well. And it says, by three they come, by three thy way opens, and by the blood of the willing we call thee home. Hail, Daughter of Hatred, Creator of Sanctuary, Hail, Lilith. And so what Blizzard is really doing here is setting up Lilith as the key kind of antagonist for Diablo 4, which, as I said, I'm incredibly excited for. So, this statue uh, retailed for $4.99, which, you know, nowadays in the 1 to 4 statue is uh, on the cheaper side, I would say, especially compared to some of the pieces from, like, Prime 1. Um... However, they also, a few months after this originally went off, Blizzard ran a 20% off of everything sale on their store, and you could actually use that code on this statue. So, many people got this statue for $399.99 or $400, which, uh, you know, for a 1 to 4 scale statue in 2020 is a hell of a bargain, depending on the quality of the piece, which we'll get to soon. Um, other than that, I did notice on the uh, shipping container that this is a 2,000 unit production. So that's a little higher than you would expect to see out of most statues. But then since this is coming directly from the game's developer, um, that's not really a surprise either. So let me uh, go ahead and get the, the core packaging of this out and we'll take a look. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, pop this lid off and see what we've got inside. Okay, so very similar to what you you know would standardly expect. You've got your core piece in the center here. It looks to be very well packaged, which is a good sign. Uh, if you follow the channel and watch some of my more recent statue videos, you know I've had a bit of bad luck lately. So let's keep our fingers crossed as we go through this piece. Now already I can see that uh, yeah, there's a lot of pieces here that could potentially break off in little ways, lots of little points. Whenever you get a statue that is um, filled with very sharp details like this, um, you can see the seat, I don't know if you can see on the camera, it even flexes a little bit. So it's sadly quite easy in shipping for some of these pieces to be broken off, even just a little bit. But, you know, as a collector who's spending uh, substantial amounts of money on these types of things, that's the last thing anyone wants to see. <clears throat> Good news is, from everything I can see, this uh, this looks to be fully intact. And uh, just a quick, you know, I'll give you a close-up detail here shortly. But the paintwork is uh, is very impressive, especially for, like I was saying, a statue that is on the far lower range in terms of uh, pricing compared to some other one to four statues. So uh, definitely like what I'm seeing there so far. I'm actually gonna put this down. <clears throat> there, just to make sure. All right. So I'm assuming this, uh, wow, this is pretty extensive. Don't quite know where that goes yet. It looks like, a, uh, like an alien tail from the movies. <clears throat> I'll figure that out in a second. Here is the head of what I presume is uh, Diablo's skull that she holds. Again, uh, very well done. Like the paintwork on it. 
looks like the rest of it and the base will be on the other side. So let me get this flipped over and opened up and we'll, we'll take a look at that next. Okay, so I will go ahead and say it now. I did not expect for the wings um, and the base to be this large for this piece. I know I've said it's a one to four piece. I know I said it's gonna be uh, slightly over two feet. But again, I keep going back to the price. The fact that you could get this statue brand new from Blizzard directly for $399 or $400. Um, this is looking like it may be some of the best value we've seen from a statue in some time. I mean, look at this. That's a pretty big wing, and there's two of them, obviously, that go on her back. Now, to be clear, this is more of like a... Um, not necessarily a cheap plastic, but this is more molded. This does not look to be polystone like the core statue. So that will reduce cost of, um, you know, actually manufacturing the statue. <clears throat> and if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. I'm just going off of what uh, I'm seeing and feeling here. But this, yeah, this is definitely some type of other resin or, uh, or mold. It's slightly different from the, uh, the core statue itself. <clears throat> Base has some good weight to it. That's what you always like to see. Um, there are statues you can get which just, you know, you have this expensive nice statue and it's sitting on a base that is just not sturdy. Um, you never want to see that. So this thing, this thing uh, definitely has weight to it. I can feel it. And it's, um, I didn't realize, I thought it was just stalagmites, but it's actually overflowing kind of lava and puddles. Um, and it's painted in a glossy texture, which I will show you once we get up close as well. <clears throat> as you can see here on the bottom, Diablo 4, Lilith, Daughter of Hatred. It is not numbered, though, on the bottom, which is rare. Most of these will be numbered right on the bottom. I wonder why they didn't do that. <clears throat> All right, we've got everything out of the box. As I said, there's not going to be too any extra pieces here. That's not what this statue is about. I'll go ahead and get this piece together here. <clears throat> now Lilith has a, a metal support beam that goes straight up through the mold probably and goes right into here. So um, there is a red line to mark exactly what direction it's supposed to go, probably so that it fits in perfectly with these, this stone. Yes. There you go. Now, what will really bring it together are the wings. Got to be careful here as you slot things in. You know, they fit in tightly, but as you're applying pressure, it's very easy, as I said previously, all these little kind of corners to just slip, and it only takes one wrong move to ruin the collectible that you've spent several hundred dollars on and have waited for, which is not a good feeling. I've done it. It's not fun. That just slots right in. That's no problem at all, it looks like. Aha, uh -huh. okay. This actually comes out of her back, which is kind of interesting. It's almost like an extended vertebrae that goes all the way down at the back. All right, there you go. As I said, it's uh, pretty direct, pretty straightforward. Um, let me go ahead as I usually do here and uh, I'll move the camera so that I can give you an up close look and we can talk through some of the details. All right, so there's a look up close at Lilith. As you can see, um, detail is pretty extraordinary, uh, especially as I feel like a broken record, but especially for what you're getting for the money here. Paintwork is really solid. What you're looking for, um, which I've detailed before, right, is as there's separation in parts of the cloth here, separation in uh, detail or adornments here and especially in the clothing and up by the skin you're looking for really kind of paint overlap things that don't connect properly or don't create that seamless you know change or shift in color between the clothing and the skin and you don't see that here um, in fact even all the way down to her lipstick and her eyes are very very detailed and well done definitely what you would expect to see out of a uh, higher end collectible 
So uh, you can also see the paintwork here on the stalagmites. That's what I'm calling them. That's what we're going with. Um, as well as the, uh, the skull here. Let me turn it around. One of the really neat things I'm seeing as I take a closer look here and kind of take a moment to examine it is if you look at these wings. <clears throat> so these wings are almost translucent. In fact, they are translucent. And so, like I said, these are not the same mold necessarily as the uh, polystone statue here. However, the coloring on them and the painting uh, match perfectly. If you're just sitting back like this, you wouldn't be able to see any difference. But more importantly, the light shines through here in these open sections, um, which is, you know, pretty much what you would expect to see out of something like a certain, I guess, certain bats or, or animals like that. And it just in person here, um, I'm giving you the up close view, but in person, especially it looks uh, magnificent. Uh, truly. So uh, definitely bravo to whoever designed those because the wings is what really makes this piece stand out. It gives it kind of the depth and the, the coloring um, to make an impression when you look at it. <clears throat> As you can see also, you can see kind of her spine piece coming out of the back here, which which actually just sits. It, it, it tails all the way down here. There's a little connecting piece at the bottom here. Um, that uh, may go in somewhere or may just uh, kind of sit, but it connects right up top here and comes all the way down. And that is painted to match a lot of the things around her uh, armor and core attire as well. So, so this is, um, yeah, this is, this is beautiful. I'm really, really loving what I'm seeing. In fact, you could probably hear as I talk about it that I'm geeking out a little bit, which is uh, what it's all about, right? You don't buy these things to just uh, be unimpressed and leave it sitting somewhere. You buy it as a showpiece. And um, this is absolutely a showpiece. And uh, one, in terms of value, that's definitely up there among the best I've actually reviewed. So bravo, Blizzard. All right, so let me pull over a couple other statues and we'll close out with a little comparison as I like to do, just to give you a sense of scale and scope for Lilith here compared to some other pieces around the game room. So as you can see, I brought over a couple other the pieces that I've reviewed recently, including this is the Prime One uh, Yennefer statue, obviously from Witcher 3, and then uh, the Ellie Last of a statue. This is made by Dark Horse and licensed by Sony. Now, what I find really interesting as I've brought these over is you can see very clearly, we'll come back to Ellie in a second. This is a Prime One, a very well-known statue maker, one of my favorites, Prime One statue. Um, incredible detail, Witcher 3 statue. These retail for around $800. Um, they are sold out. They only make uh, 500 of them, I think, of the regulars or the 750 of the exclusive. 500 exclusive, 750 regular, excuse me. Um, now, as I keep saying, right, looking at these side by side, from the actual body mold um, and to the size and scale, it's really, really impressive to me what Blizzard has delivered here for the price. Um, <clears throat> now, that goes to saying the mold here is more complex for Prime 1. The base is obviously much, much more extensive. It's a heavier piece. So you are still getting, um, you know, a lot for your money in the statue world with the Prime 1 statue. But again, just if you're someone looking for a showpiece, big Diablo fan, something like that, you cannot beat the value you're getting from a statue from Lilith here. This is really, really impressive. And Blizzard deserves a big shout out for their collectible department because this is awesome. Meanwhile, I reviewed this one recently as well. Now this is a, a smaller scale statue, obviously, um, and it's a lot cheaper. I believe this retailed for 179, so around 180. It is polystone, it's well done. You, you can check out my review if you want more detail on it, but it does just go to show you side by side the difference in what you get for your money between something like this made by Dark Horse 
versus these. In particular, now that I have this in front of me, Lilith, for the $400 mark, um, or $500, if we're being fair, $500, because um, that's the, the retail price on it. But compared to something like this, I mean, it's, it's night and day. Um, you can kind of see it in the video here, but I mean, every detail is so much superior uh, on uh, Lilith here. It's, uh, it's just a whole different level. So anyway, um, love this piece. One of my favorites in a while. Can't wait to get it set up somewhere where I can just kind of have it sitting there as a showpiece. And, um, you know, it's awesome. Love statues. That's why I do this. So anyway, any questions you have about Lilith, any of the other statues, you can find these videos on, uh, on our channel. Anything you want to know about this piece in particular, I'm happy to answer. Just leave a comment. If you like what I do with the statues here and like what I do with the, uh, the videos to give you looks at these things, please give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and uh, it's always appreciated. So as always, Ains from Season Gaming, thank you for stopping by. Until next time.